Hello, my loves, and welcome to your reading. Now, before we get started, please do remember that energy is interchangeable. So feel free to take messages, flip them, twist them, reverse them, however you see fit. If it does not fit, please do not try to force it. Just feel free to check your chart and check your other placements. As present and future, you tell me as time is fluid and we are all on different timelines. And as always, please do remember that these readings are for entertainment purposes only. And if you like this video, don't forget to smash that like button down below. If you have not already, make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications. This way you know when the videos are posted. And as always, comment down below as you see fit. And if you'd like extra content, feel free to check me out over on OnlyFans. And if you can't access OnlyFans, check me out over on Gumroad. I just uploaded a new video over there and all signs. And um, there's another collective that's getting uploaded later today as well. With that said, my loves, let's get right on to your read, shall we? Starting off with Aries on first house. What do we have going on for Aries on first house, please? I'm hearing that song behind blue eyes. Not gonna lie, some of you could be like kind of going through a thing behind closed doors where you're kind of, you know, it's like outside, you know, to the world. It's like you're doing great. Yeah, everything's great, you know, but behind closed doors, you're just like kind of going through a thing right now. Um, some of you could, you know, uh, some of you could be hurting when it comes to your money or, you know, you're just hurting over some form of situation or disconnect with someone. Um, now, your overall energy. Oh, looking good and feeling fine. I feel like you're just kind of getting out there, finding yourself socializing more, wanting to get out there. Some of you could be ready to get out there, wanting to date. Um, some of you could be putting yourself out there on the apps. But I feel like more so than anything, you're just like in this energy where oh, some of you could be kind of going out to, it's like going out with people, going to, you know, hit the bars or have a few drinks. It's like, it feels like someone who's like kind of wanting to have their cup kind of filled by other people, not going to lie. Some of you could be looking for some form of emotional nourishment from sources outside of yourself or something to kind of fill your cup where it feels somewhat empty, especially specifically for those of you who are going through something behind closed doors that no one else really knows of. Especially every time I see this card, I keep hearing behind blue eyes. <sighs> Anything good coming? Um... I feel like I'm taking the, I feel like this, uh, this King of Wands is you. And I feel like it just feels like you're going to get through whatever it is that you're going through. For those of you who are going through something behind closed doors where it's like, uh, you feel like, you know, nothing's right. I'm torn. I'm all out of faith. This is how I feel. And there's a sense of, you know, feeling like you have to go through it alone. It just feels like you're going to be able to get through it. And it feels like you're going to come out better. Um, after going through whatever this is. I feel like you're, you're going to get through it. Um, though it might seem like it's taking a while. I feel like you are going to push through. I feel like some of you are going to literally find yourself in this burst of energy where it's like you kind of go to force yourself to just push through and like, you know what? I'm tired of feeling like this. So it's like, you know what? Let's do something different. Let's let's just make an active decision to not, okay? Um, some of you could find yourself find, getting a bit of a newfound wave of confidence as well, especially the more so you try to force yourself to kind of move past and work through whatever it is that you're going through. Now, um, what to avoid? Don't be overindulgent. Don't be selfish for one was the first thing that I heard. Don't be greedy. But number two, be mindful of overindulgence or, you know, uh, heavy drinking is what I want to say, because that's what this feels like. It feels like someone literally drowning out to fill a void or, or something, which is what I felt with this three of cups as well. Like someone looking for something to kind of fill something that they feel is lacking within themselves. It's like trying to drown something out. It's like trying to fill a cup that just feels like it just, it's almost like, say if you have a, a cup with, with a hole in it, right? If you keep pouring into the cup, nothing sticks because it just keeps falling out the hole, right? That's kind of what this is, what the energy is given. That's the energy that I had with this three of cups. And that's what I'm getting with this nine of cups. So be wary of that, especially for any of you's hitting the bottle. Don't use uh, don't use uh, booze as a band aid or any substance as a band aid. Um, now, surprise! Everything's gonna work out in the end, so don't sweat it. Also, some use there could be some form of uh, something, some form of growth in regards to your career. Um, some use could find a job that you know pays better. Some use. 
uh, maybe there's a sense of getting a little bit of a raise or some shit like that. It just feels like a lot of, some of you are going to find yourself throwing yourself in, into work a lot more. Those of you who are self-employed, you could be going through a bit of a growth spurt in your business, especially around the spring. There's just a sense of money kind of coming in. Uh, things, uh, I feel like things are going to pick up. And you're going to find yourself a little more busy with um, work, especially as we go into the spring, into the nicer weather. Um, some of these can might ha have extra work on your hands, literally, you know, kind of things coming left and right, self-employed or not, you know? Um, but I feel like ultimately work aside, everything in general is going to work out. So it feels like don't stress over it too much because everything's going to work out in the end, regardless of whatever the situation entails. All right, my loves, that's what I got you, got for you. That's your read. Next up, Taurus and second house. What we got going on for Taurus and second house, please. Oh, shit. Taurus. Oh, Taurus. Um, Hierophant is you, bitch. Ten of Cups, Nine of Pentacles. I'm sorry. Yeah, Ten of Cups, Nine of Pentacles. For my single Taurians. Guess what, bitch? I don't feel like you're going to be single much longer. I'm just saying. I'm here in Chapel of Love. Some of you could have a serious relationship coming in and this could be something that, you know, sticks around for a while. I'm just saying. Um, your current energy. Right now, you could be going through a bit of a dance of change. As some of you could just be trying to basically focus on your everyday 3D muggle stuff. You know, trying to basically juggle the tasks at hand. But I feel like some of you, I feel more than anything, the overwhelming energy of some of you are just like kind of learning to embrace the dance of change. Learn to embrace the unknown, go with the flow, and just embrace change altogether. Even if there's a sense of, I don't even know what the fuck's going to happen. You know what? Fuck it, YOLO, bitch! You know? Now, anything good coming? Um, absolutely, positively. Something that you're not going to see coming at all, though. For some of you, there could be something that, uh, something that you felt the need, that felt that you had to close off from, something that you felt you had no choice but to turn away from. Um... There's going to be some form of good outcome with that. Uh, I feel like regardless, there's something that you don't see coming. I feel like I'm, I feel like it's meant to be a bit of an air of mystery and vague because it's going to be different for everyone, but it is, it's a bit of a good, it feels kind of surprises. It, it's, it's like, there's something good coming. You don't need to know what it is. Just know that it's going to be good. That's what it's given Two two, by the way. Now, what to avoid? Don't settle for less, bitch. Never settle for less ever again is what I'm hearing. Don't settle for less. Also, don't feel that you only have to give the bare minimum when it comes to whatever, you know? Uh, don't be greedy. Don't be one-sided. Also, do not tolerate one-sided shit, you know? Um, see people for whom what they truly are. Only water flowers. Don't water weeds. Surprise! I feel like you got love coming in. Your cup is going to run it over because I feel like you got something coming... Oh, I was like, did that? I was like, wait a minute. Is that like some twisted ass unicorn? Because I was like, it looked like a fucking horn, but I forgot. It's a part of the shell. Oh. Makes me think of like a snail. So something that could have taken a while to get there comes. It may have taken a while, especially for those of you who are single, maybe even single for a while. Well, guess what? Surprise. Now you got something coming in. I feel like that's what the good shit is. I feel like you got some, I feel like you got love coming in. For some reason, maybe there's something else. It just feels like you, there's something good that you're going to get a little bit blindsided by. For some reason, this could be something that you felt that you had to close off to, or you had to cut off the, the very idea of whatever this is. Something that you thought that you just couldn't allow yourself to entertain the, oh, the idea or the notion that, you know, you could have this or this could be whatever this is. That could be anything. That could even be like, you know, I could never do that. I could never be that. You know, it's like, Never say never, bitch. Um, but surprise, your cup is going to feel fulfilled. And I feel like you have love coming in as well. I do. I can't get past the energy. So I don't know. For those of you who are single, enjoy your single enjoy your singlehood because it feels like you have something coming in that could be a form of wish fulfillment. I keep hearing that song. Couldn't we be happily ever after? So this could be a happily ever after type situation. Again, you could literally end up marrying this bitch, Ten of Cups, bookending the Hierophant, which is you, or just be in something long term. Not everyone looks to get married, you know? 
But towards second house, that's what I got for you. That is your read. Next up, Gemini and third house. What do we have going on for my sweet Gemmy Gems and third house? Oh, oh, oh. your daddy's home, home for me, and I know you've been waiting on this loving affair. Your overall energy tower. Somebody's gonna be going through some major changes in your life. For some of these, there could just be a sense of major kind of reconstruction of one's own life. This is like kind of turning your world upside down. Uh, your life as you knew it is not the same. There's a sense of somebody's going to be starting over again because the tower is when something that's not working, we just completely demolish it and we start again from the ground up. Some of these could be literally the energy of starting again from the ground up. Some of you could, you know what else I get? Some of these could be in the energy where it's almost like, you know what? We don't even have to bring the tower down. Let's just leave the tower and everything in it. <laughs> That's kind of what it's given. It's almost like, you know what? Let's let's not even go through all that. Let's just leave it all behind. Let's just leave it all there and just start over completely from scratch. Some of these could be in the energy of starting over from scratch. It just feels like there's major changes going on in your life. Uh, there's a sense of reconstruction of one's own life. Daddy's home. <laughs> I keep getting the song. Um, anything good coming? Yeah. Someone who knows how to take charge. Um, romantic and chantic Atlantic City. Someone could like music. I'm drawn to down here where as much as it's people, it just, it has, it had an energy of like musical notes to me. Um, some of you see, make me feel like dancing. Gonna dance the night away. Some of you might end up taking a night out and, uh, meeting someone, you know, someone who they're pretty big deal for what it is that they do. This is not a fucking bum bitch. This is someone who they got their shit together. They got a, they got a straight head on their shoulder, you know? Um, others of you, there's just an energy. Um, you're going to be stepping into this power position for yourself. You know, there's a sense of really kind of embracing your masculine energy, having this sense of take shift initiative and go getter type energy, getting shit done, especially for those of you who you're just in this energy where it's like a time to focus, rebuild, restructure, starting over again, you know, started from the bottom. Now we're here, started from the bottom. Now the whole team's here. Maybe some of you are starting from the bottom. Now you're here. And basically there's a sense of restructuring. Some of you, if you're business owners, there could be a sense of restructuring one's own actual business you know um in which case there will be a sense of you know good to it um good outcome in that uh positive change but it just feels like others of you like i said this could be you finding yourself uh embracing that power position um taking the lead taking charge making shit happen What to avoid. For those of you when it comes to like the power position, power play, or any of you who are like, you know, business owners or anything like that, or even if you're not a business owner, you know, maybe you could be, you know, a boss or some shit, right? Um, don't be a dick, you know? This is like the type of energy where it's like someone who like kind of talks past someone and it's like, look, I don't, I don't care what you have to say. I don't care what you have to think. Just fucking listen to the words coming out of my mouth and fucking do what I said, you know? Like, don't do that shit. Don't like talk past or talk down to anyone. Um, also, Use your words wisely is what it feels like. Um, be mindful of what you say because I get a sense of like, look, what you speak kind of, how you speak to people, it affects them. So it's like, be kind. Don't be an asshole because your words, especially right now in this time frame that you're watching this video, they seem to have an everlasting effect on those, especially for any of you who have kids. I'm drawn to the energy where it's almost like, you know, you see how this, the rose is all the way up here, but it's almost like uh, it's almost like a parental type of energy is what I'm getting, which is so weird. But, you know, I got to go what I feel. It's like, be kind with your words um, because your words have a lasting effect and leave an imprint on those who you use them on. So use your words widely. Be kind. Be kind. Rewind. No surprise. I feel like you're going to feel like your cup is just quite fulfilled. There's a sense of this is a very transformative and yet a transformative and yet oh so fulfilling time that you're stepping into. 
it's like uh, life is going to be a bit more peaceful. Things are going to be opening up. Possibilities are going to see seem endless. And there's a sense of just feeling like things are moving in the right direction. And you're just going to feel like, huh? Shit, bitch, I'm swimming in a fucking ocean of emotion. Who needs a fucking cup? I am good. It's kind of like that. You're going to feel like, I don't know. It's just like really good. So it was truly fulfilled. It's like someone, 1616 16 on the clock, as I said that, but truly fulfilled. Almost like, you know, you're just completely surrounded in feeling, if you're feeling the love and you're feeling fulfilled, sharing the love as well. With that said, Gemini third house is what I got for you. That's your read. Next up, Cancer and fourth house. What do we have going on for Cancer and fourth house, please? I always feel like somebody's watching me. I got my eye on you. Someone could be watching you. You could be feeling like someone's watching you. There could be someone who you have your back turned to who is watching you. Could be a fire sign with that um, King of Wands type energy. Doesn't have to be. Your current energy. There's a sense of less and less is more. Some of you just being a bit more low key. Less is more. Some of you could find yourself in this low key energy. Just less is more. Others of you, you could also be in this energy of focusing more so on your manifestations. Some of you are just like kind of in your energy where it's like you're embracing the unknown, facing fears and not allowing fears or anything to consume you. Being open and receptive in a very receptive energy for it's like, you know what? Okay, sara, sara, whatever will be, will be embracing the unknown. You, there's just a sense of there's a heavy manifestation energy to you and a sense of inner receiving type energy, having trust in the universe where it's like, you know what, I allow it. I am open and receptive to all and I embrace the unknown and it's like fear not. There's a sense of not fearing of what will be, what is or what is yet to come because there's a sense of having having the sense of trust and an openness and a receptiveness to whatever it is that is in store for you. <clears throat> Good news. Anyone who's trying to play some, look, anyone on some bullshit, petty bullshit, they're only playing themselves. I feel like you're going to come out on top. You could have people who are trying to play you. Maybe there's a situation with someone, someone's trying to play you or be petty or I don't know. Someone's trying to do something shady or be cutthroat, but it's only going to backfire on them and it's only going to benefit you. Um, if there's someone who has done you dirty or is trying to do you dirty, um, someone who has done you dirty, there's a sense of you're coming out on the opposite end of that. This could even be, there could be even someone who like spits on your name and that's going to backfire on them. You know, uh, it's, it's kind of like that saying, um, you <sighs> allow karma to do its dirty work. The rotten fruit will fall on its own, you know? So this is a situation, whatever situation you have regarding to whoever, you, whoever, whatever you want to deem as rotten fruit, the rotten fruit will fall on its own and you will be standing there and thriving and continue to flourish. <clears throat> what is that saying? No, something against me shall prosper. I don't know why that just came through. So no negative shit or whatever the fuck will prosper. Why am I fucking Ricky Bobby? God damn you. <laughs> fuck you, Ricky Bobby. What to avoid? Look. Don't sit, don't, don't go in circles. Don't sit around and waste your time. Also, don't, don't allow motherfuckers to try to rush you into anything you don't feel comfortable in. Look, slow and steady wins the race. Uh, but it's like, don't allow anyone to try to force you to basically rush into something faster than you're, than you're more comfortable to. But also don't find yourself going in circles or wasting your time going in circles on something where it's just like, look, if you feel something's off or you feel like there's something's a waste of your time or someone's dragging ass and stuff, just bounce. You know, time is precious. Time is energy. And you can't get that back. Also, there could be something, some form of opportunity or something that kind of opens up, but it's something that will affect you in the positive in a positive way when it comes to your long term 2121 on the clock as I'm saying it. But here's the thing. Don't take too long. Don't take too long because whatever this opportunity is, it's something that'll benefit you in a positive way for the long term. However, if you snooze, you lose. If you don't jump on the opportunity when it shows itself, it's going to be gone as fast as it came. 
And this is something good because this is something that will follow you in the long term of your life. So there's some form of opportunity that will that you will benefit from long term. But you got to jump on the you got to jump on this opportunity when it comes in. Don't take too long. Don't lollygag around, you know? There's something coming in and it's something good and it's something that again, you can kind of take this opportunity with you till the very end, whatever the fuck this is. This is something that'll affect you in a positive way for a long time. But don't sleep on it. I'm hearing that song. Couldn't we be happily ever after? Surprise! Um, something's going to put you in your feels and make you feel good. I'm just saying. Someone could say something. Someone could do something. I don't know. Something's going to butter your biscuit, butter your crab legs, and make you feel really good. I'm just saying. It's like, uh, oh, for some of you, there could be someone who kind of like kind of gets their little fucking tentacle hooks, their tentacle grips on you and like kind of works their way in there. I'm just saying. Could be some other water sign. Because I'm drawn to like how she's got like the whole uh, the octopus shit and it's all fish and all that. I feel like someone's going to get their hooks on you and they're going to fucking butter your biscuits and butter your little crab legs and fucking just like kind of get you in your feels. Someone or something's getting you in your feels, bitch. 23, 23 on the clock when I said that. Someone or something is going to fucking get their little tentacles all wrapped around you and get you in your feels. And I'm hearing, I think I'm in love. I don't know. Something's going to fucking light, and light up and delight you and you're going to be feeling really good. I don't know, but it doesn't feel bad. Um, it feels like manifestations are coming in pretty much. Um, yeah. And I feel like some form of positive outcome turnaround for you. Uh, I don't know what your situation is. I don't know if someone did you dirty or played, played you out or someone, someone's just trying to throw shade or throw dirt on your name or some shit like that. But anything done and you notice in this five of swords, there's fucking mirrors. Any any ill will towards you, regardless of whether it's someone spitting on your name or trying to fucking throw dirt or whatever the fuck, or, you know, doing you dirty or some shit. They're doing some shady shit. It's going to fucking basically bounce back to them. You're going to be fucking fine. You're going to be Gucci. You're going to be the one coming out on top. So don't even sweat it. No sweat off your back. All right, my loves? With that said, 24, 24 on the clock. Cancer, fourth house is what I got for you. That's your read. Next up, Leo and fifth house. What do you have going on for Leo and fifth house, please? Oh. Oh. So this is love. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So this is love. Oh, shit. Oh, springtime is the best time. This is the Seven of Pentacles, but I'm getting like springtime when everything comes in the blossom. There's a sense of harvest. Love is in the air. Holy shit. Six of Wands. Oh, we have an it couple coming. Oh, of course, Leo, we get the fucking it couple. 25, 25 on the clock when I said that. It's like the it couple. Oh, it's about damn time. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, look, it's about damn time. Leo, you about to fucking be that it couple bitch. You're about to be that it coupled up bitch. You and someone, this is the energy of you and someone else. You walk into a room, you own that shit. Now, others of you, there could be something in regards to your career. There could even be a partnership that uh, really fucking, mm. Some some of these, there could be something that you've already done in regards to your career. Could even be like a form of partnership or um, something or some form of work contract. Something that there's a sense of harvest and I don't know. It's like something that you've done already. There's a sense of uh, recognition and like really shining, standing out. There's a sense of elevation. Uh, the two of cups is, it could also be a form of, you know, contracts, ag agreements, things done with someone else. Um, seven of Pentacles, that's a sense of the seeds you've already watered. There's something you've already done with someone in regards to some form of work things, whether it's you worked with another company or you worked with an actual person or whatever. And it's all like something's going to be getting extra attention in regards to you and something you've done. And it's like, I don't know, it's like you're getting seen and recognized and boom, and there's a sense of harvest, but it's off of something that you've already done. Others of you, there's an actual connection and you two are going to be like the it bitch. So I'm going to use both. It's like the best of both worlds now. Your energy. Oh, man, are you open and receptive for love? This is like, oh, love on me, bitch. I am so ready. That's what this is giving. You're ready, open, and receptive for love. Don't tell me otherwise. 
Look at this card. Look at this card, bitch. She is open, ready, raring to receive. You can't tell me otherwise. And I don't give a fuck if you're a male or female. Don't be telling me, oh, look, I'm a dude. I ain't trying to receive shit. Yeah, fucking receive this, bitch. <laughs> you know what I'm getting? Come on, come on, put him up, put him up. The fucking cowardly lion. For those of you who are too chicken shit before when it comes to love. No. Oh my God, the starfish. Oh, you're going to find a lifer. Good shit. You're taking the plunge with a bitch. You are taking the plunge into something new. Now, for others of you, you're just in this energy. Your cup runneth open. But oh, I feel like you're open and ready and receptive, bitch. I don't give a fuck. You're in a good emotional place, but I feel like you're open and receptive for something more with someone else. Look at the two fish and the starfish. You want someone. You want someone by your side, right by my side. Da -da 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 with me, right by my side. Someone who you could be spend your life with. Your person, your partner, starfish. Um, I feel like you're ready to take the leap in something. You're going to take the leap in something. You are. You are, bitch. I feel like some of you are taking the leap in love. Some of you could also be a leap in regards to something in regards to career. Some, it's like taking a risk. You're going to take a risk that fucking pays off regardless. You're taking a risk and it's, you're just like, oh, Aries season. Aries season is all about taking risks. Every time you, it's like, you're going to just like have this energy about you where it's like, you're not even going to think about it. You're not even going to second guess. It's like, you know what? Fuck it. YOLO, I'ma do it. I'ma do it. Why? I'm not even holding myself back. Fuck this. I feel called to do this. Let's do this, you know? It's like you're not you're no longer gonna hold yourself back. You're just gonna fucking go for shit. And you know what? That's gonna fucking benefit you. It's like the more you fucking take the risks, the more you reap a form of reward for whatever it risks that you're that you're going after. What to avoid? Um, bullshit artists, petty bitches. Also, don't allow anyone to fucking, bitch, don't kill my vibe. Don't allow fucking petty bitches to pull you down or try to pull your vibe. Um, don't play into bitches reindeer games, you know? Uh, remember, the way people treat you is literally a reflection of how they feel about themselves. Don't even entertain it. It's not worth it. And you know what happens when you don't water water weeds and they're just sitting around there looking like a bunch of dumbasses playing the goddamn self because you're not even fucking acknowledging their existence. Now, surprise! You got a soulmate coming in, bitch. Some of you, there's something that you've always wanted to do. Some of you, this could be something that you, there could be something that you're doing. Uh, maybe there's something that you're doing for yourself where it's like maybe a hobby into a hustle where it's a sense 3, 30.03 on the clock as I'm saying this. And it's like, there's a sense of something that you've been doing uh, that you've always wanted to do since you were a kid. You're going to do it. You're going to take the risk and it's going to pay, pay off. Some of you, there could be something you've already been investing to, which is something you've always wanted to do since you were a kid. And there's a sense of recognition, um... And harvest for that, whatever it is. Maybe some use of turn a hustle and a hobby into a hustle, right? And there's a sense of getting recognized. Maybe some use like to do crafts and shit and you put it online. And there's a sense of all of a sudden, boom, a video takes off. You know, it goes viral or some shit like that. Um, and for others of you, there's a soulmate coming in. And this one's gonna, this one's gonna stick around. This one's not gonna wanna let you go. This is someone who your, your inner child is gonna feel safe with is what it feels like too. This is going to be someone who you feel safe to just be yourself with. It's like you don't feel like you have to be guarded or anything. You could just um, let your wall down with this bitch. Oh, I like that. That's good. With that said, Leo, fifth house. That's what I got for you. That's your read. Next up, Virgo and sixth house. What do we have going on for Virgo and sixth house, please? so it feels like there's a lot of positive changes on the way on the horizon for you there could be a sense of being in a receptive um, mode uh, a form of manifestation and open and receptive um, and it feels like there's a lot of positive change coming your way so those of you, um, some things may have taken a while, but it feels like things are finally going to pick up pace. You see in this Knight of Pentacles, the horse is a bit galloping now. So stuff that has taken a while, especially we have the Ace of Pentacles dead in center here. Uh, stuff that you've been manifesting that has taken a while. Someone said he wins the race. Things are finally about to pick up pace and there's going to be a lot of positive change and a lot of, um, it just feels like good positive change incoming manifestations. Long overdue, long awaited. Your current energy, just having the sense of, 
feeling older, wiser. There's a sense of inner knowing. It's just like a sense of certainty. It's like someone who has this state of Zen, state of calm, and just, it's almost like you have this inner knowing where it's like, you know what? I have, I have a, a sense of clarity. I can see the path. I can see whatever. And there's a sense of just feeling certain and okay. And there, it is, it's like a peaceful, calm type of energy too. It's like, you know what? I don't have to worry. I don't have to stress. I just have this inner knowing and this sense of, it's like you, you see the fucking path, you see the pathway lit before you. So there's a sense of, you don't have to question it. You're just, you're just in the state sense of certainty, not questioning anything. It's just like, you're in the place where it's like, you're older, wiser, and you've learned to like, kind of tr have trust, the sense of uh, trust in the process. I don't know. Um, good shit. Six of swords. I feel like for those of you who are dealing with any form of difficulty or obstacles, whether it be personal or with someone, I feel like you're going to get past them. You're going to get through them. Um, some of you, if you've had difficulty travel, I don't know why I'm getting this, but I have to. But if there's been any difficulty or problems in regards to some form of travel, I feel like uh, those are going to be worked out. Um, some of you, there could have been some form of delay in travel. And it feels like, you know, you're going to think whatever delay or holdup there was in regards to some form of travel, um, there's, it's finally like the lanes are going to get cleared out. I don't know. Maybe some of you get stuck in the lanes and you have to, you know, take a left or some shit or go some, di some different route or it's like, you know, traffic will clear up. I don't fucking know. But I get a sense of obstacles because you see all that back there. It's, it gives me a sense of like mountains and mountains are obstacles, right? And you see, there's even a thing where it's like, you know, kind of between two, you see this little person here and then she's over there. And it's just like, I don't know, whatever it is that you want to get through, you want to get past whatever problems you're dealing with, or if you're dealing with a problem with someone else and you want some form of conflict resolution, I feel like you're going to be able to get through it and get past whatever happened. Um, I feel like just things are going to feel like they're, it just feels like a bit of smooth sailing type of energy moving forward. It's almost like uh, whatever problems, whatever headaches that you've had or hiccups along the way, it just feels like things are going to get a little bit easier in the sense of a bit more smooth sailing, you know, maybe you dealt with some choppy waters, you know, again, some hiccups along the way, regardless of any circumstance, uh, what the circumstances might entail. But it's like, um, things are about, you know, the, it's about to smooth out, you know, things are about to smooth out a bit and, you know, the waters are going to be calmer moving forward in regards to whatever this is. Now, what to avoid? Time and energy are precious. Do not waste it. Do not overgive. You see how this one over here is like huge compared to the rest and it's like equal. Don't be don't be one of those people who allows others, you know, we all have a tendency to do it in our lives where we tend to overgive. Don't overgive. That's what it feels like. Look, it's okay to be generous, especially, you know, some people they like to just do things for people, you know, it's just the way that they're built, right? But at the same time, don't completely overgive, you know, because there's some people who will take advantage of that shit. People will take advantage of uh, your generosity or a kind heart, you know, and your energy is sacred. Don't water weeds as well. Also, never settle for less, especially if you're someone who you give like, don't don't be one of those bitches like you give like 99% and you basically settle for like 1%. And then you complain because they can't even fucking give the 1%. It's like, why are you even settling for 1%? 50-50, bitch. If they can't meet you where, the, where you're at, then don't even bother. You want reciprocal, reciprocal energy. Surprise! Two of Wands. There's some form of planning. Someone has plans for you. Someone has plans for you. This is like someone way off in the distance. Could be someone who is literally at a distance from you. Someone who has been keeping tabs on you. Someone has plans in regards to you. This could be someone from a long distance planning to come towards you. For you, for some of you, if you have been planning, if you have been keeping your eye on someone planning to go towards them, especially for those of you wanting to make something right, right? Or wanting to get past some form of conflict with someone. And you notice, like I said, you have the little person there. We got the little person there. For those of you where there's some form of conflict or problem that you want to resolve with someone, right? Oh, if that's the case, don't be a bitch. Don't try to buy someone's my love. Don't cost a thing. Don't look if you're if you're trying to make amends with someone. Don't try to basically buy a bitch. That don't impress me much. I heard J Lo, love don't cost a thing, and Shania Twain. That don't impress me much. Look, action talks, bullshit walks, and you can't just buy people's affection. 
if you want to make something right with someone, be genuine. Have it come straight for, from the heart. Don't just, you know, don't just figure, don't just try to be one of those bitches. Oh, yeah, here, I got you this, so now we should be fine. Or, oh, my God, and now I'm hearing that song. I said a bunch of flowers. I can't stand flowers. I'm one of those bitches. I never got the thing where people... I was never one of those chicks who liked flowers. To me, I see it as wasteful. You're literally killing the plant. You want to get me something? Get me the whole fucking plant. Shit. Get the fucking plant in the little pot and then fucking get me a fucking yard to go plant that shit in. But I don't want a fucking dead. I don't want I don't want to kill a plant just for, you know, temporary pleasure. Hell no. Let that plant let that let that let it fucking live, you know? But that's kind of what it's given. Like don't be one of those bitches who is like, "Oh, I'll just go buy out the whole floral shop and make it all better." And it's like, "No. No." Don't use things and don't kill them. I mean, yeah, some people like they, they like they like plants, and I'm not I'm not knocking it down. It's just that you know, to each their own. It's just hmm. I see it as killing the plant. I'm just that type of bitch. But then again, I'm sitting here with cards that you know, uh, they're like uh, extended family to me. They're like extended children. I've literally even joked around with my with my uh, son, where it's like if there was ever a fire, <laughs> I get all you motherfuckers out of, out of the house, right? And then I have to go grab all the fucking cards and throw them in a the fucking thing and take them down. He's like, the cards? I'm like, yeah. Obviously, if it's that bad, I'm not going to. But still, you get what I'm saying, you know? Um, meaningful shit. Don't... Don't just try to come in and think that you could throw, throw a number or, you know, an object uh, and use it as a band-aid, you know? Um, especially if something was not reciprocal in the connection to begin with, whatever the connection is, could be friend, family, love, or whatever. Um, <clears throat> but it feels like surprise for those of you who have literally been, oh, this goes, hand, this goes hand in hand too with like the travel things too. If any of you, specifically for those of you who are at a distance from someone who you've kind of been keeping eyes on, who you want, you want to overcome some form of obstacle, maybe distance was the obstacle. Um, but it feels like there's a sense of overcoming whatever obstacle that there is between them. You might not see a way, you might not, oh, you might not see how this is going to work, but you're going to make it work. You're going to be able to do, I don't know how I'm going to do this. You're going to be able to do this. I don't know how I'm going to make this work. Surprise. You're going to figure it out because you make it fucking work. <laughs> it's kind of what it's given. So I don't know. But Virgo, sixth house is what I got for you. That's your read. Next up, Libra and seventh house. What do we have going on for Libra and seventh house? <laughs> for the surprise we have the eight of wands and under the deck we have eight of cups eight of swords eight 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 and we are in the year of eight some of you could finally be getting yourself free of an unhealthy situation walking away from something once and for all something someone it's not healthy could be something that you felt tied or bound to. Um, some of you, not going to lie, there could be a sense of walking away from an old way. Getting lit Someone could be getting released from jail. Eight of Cups to the to the, to the the Eight of Swords. Someone could be getting released from jail. I have never gotten that. Well, no, I've gotten that before, but this is so specific. Look at the Eight of Cups literally walking away from the Eight of Swords. Someone could literally be getting released from jail. Some of you could be getting a word, word about someone who was toxic. Who you have a wall up against? You you basically you got you you got you got you you got you built a wall away from this bitch. You don't want this bitch near you. Um, there could be some toxic bitch who you get word of is getting out of jail, or you can find out that some toxic bitch who you feel the need to oh you some of you could have an order of protection against this bitch. I've never gotten that with the nine of wands. This could be some, there could be some toxic bitch who has some form of order of protection who you walked away from. You can get word that this person is locked up, or if this person is already locked up, this person could be getting released. Ooh. All right. Your energy. Seven of Swords. I feel like a lot of yous are just like kind of trying to be more low key. Less is more. There's a sense of avoidance. <sighs> You're not very trusting of those. You don't trust many. So this is like um, you don't want any. There's a sense of being to need uh, needing to needing to, be, you know, it's fucking retrograde. Jesus Christ. Needing to do things a bit on the sly because you don't want anyone to know what your plans are there's a sense of not trusting people 
And so you're kind of like trying to lay low, stay to yourself and not really telling anyone that what you're doing. I feel like you have plans for yourself for walking a better path, something, there's something, some form, something in, in regards to something good for, that you want, that you want to do. You want to do something good for yourself, right? Something that'll make you happy, but you feel like you have to do it on the sly. You can't let other people know because you don't want, you don't want people to fuck it up. You don't want, you don't trust anyone to not do anything to kind of get in between this and ruin it before you actually get there. So you're being slick and kind of doing it on the sly. Good shit. There's a sense of well-received. Some of there could be a form of bonus um, increase in money. Um, I feel I feel mainly, though, something well-received. That's literally what I heard, well-received. Something's going to be well-received. Something that you're doing. Maybe, I don't know, maybe you're planning a surprise for someone, but there's a sense of something being well-received. It's almost like a warm reception, well-received. Especially if any of you are like planning some form of surprise. That could be the on-the-low type of energy, too. Something that makes you happy and would make someone else happy. You can't get past the energy. If someone's doing something on the sly, and whatever is being done, there's a sense of warm and well-received reception. Um, now, also, something that you once gave to will give back to you again is what I wanted to say. Um, something that you once gave to giving back to you again in some form of way. Uh, there's some form of seed or that you planted. There's something that you were giving to at one point, and there's a sense of uh, getting back from it, whatever that is for you. That could be anything. Hell, that could be stocks or investments for all I fucking know, you know? Um, it feels like something kind of big. There's something, something kind of major. Oh, something going on between, oh, there's something kind of major that's going to go on between you and someone else. Some of you could meet the one. Some of you could be hiding a relationship where it's like, uh, I don't know. It feels like there's something kind of, there's something, there's going to be something between you and someone else if there isn't there already. And it feels like it's going to be bigger than you thought. Dirty mind. But I can't help it. What to avoid? I literally heard an Aries. For some of you, avoid an Aries of the Fool card. Um, no, for those of you, if it's not an actual Aries, it's just saying, don't be naive. Don't be stupid. Don't be careless. Uh, the Fool can be naive and careless and reckless. Um, you know, they don't really think. They just kind of do. Um, so be mindful of what you do. Be mindful of what you say. Also, be mindful of who you tell your what you're doing to kind of with that sly on the sly type of energy if you feel like you have to you know kind of not let people know what it is that you're doing or what's going on it just feels like you know kind of stick to that energy it feels like just don't not everyone needs to know what you're doing and don't be so trusting and forthcoming don't just be one of those people who like kind of serves everything up on a fucking silver platter for bitches you know not less is more not everyone needs to know everything that you're doing do, 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 do. surprise um well things are getting on track things are gonna fucking pick up a bit things are gonna take off a lot faster than you think in regards to something um also this is like cupid's arrow striking especially for me to get the the music that i did do, 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 do. it's like uh i feel like cupid's arrows are gonna strike this is a, oh shit <clears throat> halsey 30 seconds to mars love is madness there's a specific video compilation there's a strong focal point between the eyes, her eyes and his. Some of you could lock eyes with someone and that's it. It was love at first sight. It's like something, I think I'm in love. Oh, something, something in regards to you and someone locking eyes. This is like locking eyes. It's like you meet someone. It's like coming face to face with someone. You lock eyes and it's almost like, it's like a deadlock. Like you're just like kind of stuck. It's almost like, uh, wow. It's like you have a conversation without even actually saying a word. I've never gotten that before. It feels intense. It does. It feels a bit intense. There's going to be, there's someone who you're going to meet and there's a sense of locking eyes and there's a sense of, it's not just like instant attraction. It's just like there's this intensity and there's almost like a deadlock between the two. It's like, it's like once your eyes lock, that's it. It's like, boom. It's like, think about, Think about one of those old locks, you know, you put the lock down and then boom, it's not, it's not coming undone. Like, that's it. 
Oh, now I'm seeing, um, y'all know that bridge where everyone puts the locks, uh, that fucking love bridge or heart bridge, whatever, or they, everyone puts like the little locks with their names and shit. Like I'm seeing like little heart locks and shit. You're going to lock it down with someone. Someone's going to lock it down. Ooh, whoever this is, you, y'all going to lock it down. There's something more that there's, there must be something there that wasn't there before. Maybe this is someone you already know, but it feels like there's something kind of major going on between you and someone else. And there's something about you two locking eyes. So I don't feel like this is someone who you've actually, I mean, because I don't feel like this is someone who you've met yet because it, there, there is something about when you lock eyes. So you can't have met this person yet. It has to be new because it's, it's only when you lock eyes. And I'm literally seeing as if two people are face to face and then they lock eyes and that's it. It's like, and I only have eyes for you. But there's a sense of, it's like when I'm seeing like a padlock literally being locked. It's like, that's it. With every beat of my heart. So I don't know. I don't know, but it feels very warm. And there's a bit of a like kind of low key brush of an intensity to it. So I don't know. Um, it feels different and warm. So I don't know. Libra seventh house is what I got for you. That's your read. Next up, Scorpio and eighth house. What do we have going on for Scorpio and eighth house, please? Who else had that? Someone else had the ace of cups. I think it was Leo. So different, yet so the same. <clears throat> so much for my happy ending. Someone could be in their head, kind of stressing over a situation. Uh, could be in regards to some form of family situation, or someone could just feel like they fucked up with. Uh, in regards to someone who they saw as like their wish fulfillment, ten of cups. Some of these could be dealing with some family shit. Um. Your energy, the Ace of Cups, you are swimming in emotion, feeling quite fulfilled, quite. It's like someone who's like literally swimming and exuding love. Some of you are just like exuding love and now you are ready and receptive and wanting to share that love with someone else, wanting to find someone to share that love with. Not all of you, though, because I do get a, a sense of independence where it's like, mm, I could come out the water, but I quite like it here all by myself. I'm not going to lie. It's it's there, you know? But I feel like if the right one came, you'd be open to it. But they'd have to be just right because you're not getting out of that comfy ass water for just anybody. <clears throat> Surprise, uh, things aren't going to, the light, it feels like the load's about to be lightened. Um, things aren't going to be as difficult. Any problems you've been dealing with, it feels like, you know, uh, they're not going to be some, if there's anything that you've been worrying about, like, oh my God, how am I going to handle this? If like, if there's any tasks or anything that you're viewing as in your mind where it's like, oh my God, this is going to be such a tedious task. Or da, da, da. It's like, things aren't going to be as bad as you think. Um, it just feels like the load is going to be lightened for you. Um, things are about to lighten up is what it feels like. You know, if you've been stressing, it feels like that's going to go away. You're not going to be as stressed. Some of you are literally going to find yourself in the energy where, you know what, it's time to lighten the loads. Some of you could find yourself spring cleaning. And that alone is going to help your fucking energy because you're going to feel so much better when you remove all the shit. Think about it. Look at it this way. You could have things, right? How, how many people do this all their lives? It's like, you can't take all the shit with you when you go, right? But we will literally spend our entire lives well, we is too many people, <laughs> but so many people will spend their entire lives literally just carrying a bunch of shit around with them, no matter where they go. Right. It's like people who move, you know, we got to take all this stuff and all this stuff because it's like, but this is what I've accumulated so far. I have to hold on to all of it. And it's like, but then you have all this shit. It's like people who also like think of the people who they splurge on fucking Amazon and shit, right? They buy a bunch of shit. And as soon as they get it, they get it. And then, then boom, they have it and it sits there and it's untouched or unseen ever again. Like, think about it. How much stuff do you have in your house? Not only that, think about your entire life. Some of the stuff that you have that is sitting and tucked away. When I ask you this question, think about how long you've had it and how many moves or anything that you've had it for as well, you know, to, to really kind of, really kind of pack in the, the punch for the point of this. But it's like, you can have stuff, right? And you carry it with you from place to place. Because it's your stuff, you know? 
So you hold a, a form of sentiment value to sentimental value or some shit, right? Or just, you know, you, you want to have it because you say, well, it took me this long to get it. Okay, fine, fair enough. But how much stuff that do you have that you have not even so much as looked at or touched or seen or even thought of in the past year? Now, what about the stuff that is that you have literally had just sitting there accumulated or tucked away that you haven't looked at in a year, let alone more than that? Because I guarantee everyone has shit that they've accumulated through the years and it just sits there tucked away, just taking, literally taking up space. All it does is take up space. You're not, you're not using it. You're not looking at it. You're not doing anything with it. It's just sitting there taking up space. It's kind of like that. Some use could be really just like kind of lightening the load and just really kind of saying, you know what? Less is more. Some of you, it just feels like the load is going to get lightened regardless. I don't know. It just feels like the load is going to get lightened for you regardless. And some of you could be literally downsizing and just like less is more. And it's going to be one of the best things you've ever done for yourself. When you let go of all that old energy, it opens up gateways for new and you, it does something for you. See, people don't realize everything is fucking energy. Even the, these cards are fucking energy, bitch. This fucking tarot bag, it's got fucking energy to it. Everything has its own form of energy to it, right? Everything holds a form of energy. Some things we hold on it for the sake of sentiment from times in, in our life. But in retrospect, you know, some of those times weren't really that great. And it's like, what are we really holding on to? But when we learn to let go of things, we're not held down. It's like we leave room for new and it, it kind of keeps the energetic highway flowing. You know, think about it like uh, they say, you know, when it comes to the home, you know, you want to clear it out, you know, keep it clean, dust and don't let stuff bulk up because it's like, again, that all it's it's opening up the energetic pathways, right? 58, 58, 58, as I said that, <clears throat> it's like less is more. Some of you are going to be embracing the whole less is more thing and literally downsizing and just like kind of getting rid of a bunch of shit that you don't need because you realize, you know, you haven't, you haven't even looked at it. You haven't even touched it. You know, some of you are going to be embracing a, a form of minimalistic lifestyle. I'm just saying. Um, but it feels like regardless, it, uh, the load just feels like it's going to be lightening, uh, lightened for you. What to avoid? Don't be afraid to step outside the lines. This feels like, uh, for those of you where it's like, you know, think about it. People like to stay within the conformities of what they know, what it's a sense of comfort because it's what they've known for so long. Don't be afraid to step, up, step out the lines. Don't be afraid to color outside the lines. You know, don't be afraid to venture off into uncharted territory is what this is given. This could even be like, say if you you have a structured life in a, in an area where it's like, you're used to life this way and uh, everything's all planned out and it has to be such and such and such. And you have to be live at this place and that place. And then, well, you don't, you've never, you've never left the nest. Some music it be worse. Like you've never left the nest or maybe you've never left your hometown. And it's like, so no, I have to, you know, I can't, I have to stay here. Cause that's what it's, everyone stays here. It's like, don't be afraid to color outside the lines and fucking venture off. Don't be afraid to venture off. Don't hold yourself to just one idea and one notion. Also, just don't hold yourself to a, a stuck and narrow-minded pathway um, mindset as well. Don't be afraid to look outside the box and step outside the lines. surprise your cup is going to runneth over and then some you're just gonna feel completely quenched and fulfilled look you got some good shit coming on and i just feel like you're just going to feel you're going to find yourself in this energy where it's like you exude love bitch i mean come on you're literally fucking swimming in it already and there you're fucking straight up just you are just completely engulfed in these beautiful emotions. I'm literally hearing where I carry emotions. I feel like you're just going to find yourself feeling the best you've ever felt. Really feeling at one with yourself and within your own element. So, I don't know. I like it for you, though, Scorps. Scorpio, 8th house is what I got for you. That's your read. Next up, Sagittarius and ninth house. What do we got going on for Sagittarius and ninth house, please? That cut still in. Dun, 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 dun. And I walk right through the door, and I walk right through the door. It's all right, da -na -na. it's mine, mine, all mine.
I just feel like so look. Some of you, not gonna lie, there could be a sense of someone caught stealing and there's a sense of hitting the gavel. Your energy. Some of y'all bitches could be locked up or maybe you just, this is your energy though. Some of you could just feel like a prisoner of the mind. Some of you could be fresh out of the, out of the cling. Oh, fucking hell. I can't have you, especially for me to get, get caught, got caught stealing. Don't, don't. Some of you could be stressing going to jail for something. Especially if anyone stole. I'm just saying. If anyone was caught red-handed or caught with their hand in the cookie jar. I'm just saying. Some of you could be stressing all in your head. Oh, shit. I got caught. That could be why I got the gavel type energy. You know? Four of Pentacles. It's like a bitch caught with their hand in the cookie jar. Seven of Swords. Someone got caught stealing. Someone thought that... Some, someone did... They, look. They thought they thought that they'd get away with it. The Wheel of Fortune to the to the Magician. This is like someone, they didn't think anyone would see. They didn't think anyone would see. Wheel of Fortune, Magician to the Six of Wands. They didn't think anyone would see, but they saw. This is like, what I'm seeing is like literally from that video, Caught Ceiling, where it's like the surveillance videos. It's like they got a bitch on surveillance. I don't know. Or maybe someone you know, you know? But this is your read and this is your energy. Maybe you're with the wrong person in the wrong place at the wrong time. So I mean, you feel like you got caught up with the with the wrong person in the wrong place at the right time, uh, wrong time, where it's like, almost like, um, some of you can feel like you got caught into a situation. It wasn't even your fault. It wasn't even my fault. It wasn't me. It was them. You know, in which case, Josh could be like, oh yeah, well, we got the surveillance footage. Who was that? Who was that? It wasn't me. It was the one armed man. I don't fucking know. Some of you could be in your head about someone going to jail. Someone you know going to jail. That could be it too. I don't know. Some of these are just like really, really trapped in your fucking head. You're all up in your fucking head. Let's just leave it there. But some of these are something in regards to jail. Whether you're scared about going to jail, or maybe you just got out of jail. Maybe you're tired. You, you don't. You don't want to go back in. Or someone you know could be going to jail. Or maybe someone who's in jail is hounding you. Yo, man, bail me out. <laughs> you get a phone call. Hey, oh man, I, they caught me. You know, they got me. Oh, you know, I didn't do it. Meanwhile, you know the bitch is lying. You know the bitch did it. Yeah, I, I need I need money for bail. I don't have it. I don't have it. Can you bail me out? I don't know. I don't know. Someone could be wanting you to fix their fuck up. Now, good news. Well, there's a light at the end of the tunnel. It gets better. Look, it gets better. It does. It might not seem all sunshine and rainbows right now, but it gets better. It'll get better. It, it will. Um, whatever you're stressing about, whatever you're feeling stuck to, whatever you're worried about, it just feels like, look, it's going to get better. It's going to get better. Um, that's all it's given me. That's all it's given me. Now, what to avoid? It's a cold-hearted snake. Don't be a bitch. Don't be an asshole. Don't take your shit out on everyone else. Don't take your shit out on everyone else. Everyone goes through shit. I'm literally hearing R.E.M. Everybody hurts. Everyone goes through shit. That doesn't give you the excuse. Treat people like shit. Heavily emphasize. Don't be a bitch and don't treat people like shit. Don't take your problems out on other people. Surprise! I feel like you're going to find yourself feeling supported. You're going to find yourself in an energy where... Things aren't going to be as bad as you think. Maybe some of you are really stressed about something in regards to jail or someone going to jail or something like that. And there's a sense of it's not, this is like, all right, some of you, maybe it's not jail. Maybe you just feel like, you know, you're, you're kind of in your head. You feel like there's, there's a situation that there's absolutely nothing you can do, right? You feel like you're stuck in a situation that your hands are tied. There's nothing you can do about it. You feel helpless, right? It feels like it's gonna get better. Literally the good shit is the sun. There will be a positive outcome. Things will get better. Just look, whatever you're going through, don't take it out on other people. Don't don't allow the situation to make you cold and bitter. Don't allow whatever it is that you're dealing with to turn you into one of those people where you end up, you know, snapping on people who are trying to be there for you and care for you. Surprise with that three of cups. I feel like you're going to see a sense of community, people coming together, people trying to actually be there for you, a sense of support system. And there's a sense of coming out on the opposite end of whatever this is, where things are fine. They take a positive turn. And there's a sense of 
feeling better and that sense of you and other people coming together. But I think that's why it's also heavily emphasized. Don't take things out on those around you, especially those people who are only trying to be there for you during whatever it is that you are dealing with. Okay. So again, it's not, not everyone's dealing with fucking jail shit, right? Some of you could just find yourself really kind of stressing over something where you feel like you feel helpless. You feel like your hands are tied and there's nothing you can do. And there's nothing, there's nothing worse than the feeling like there's nothing you can do. Like what comes to mind for me is, um, when my son, he was hit by a car. That is the worst feeling ever. He was in that hospital bed. His eyes couldn't open. He would, there is no worse feeling than one where you feel completely helpless. And that's what this feels like. So don't push people away. There will be some form of positive turnaround or just things will get better. I don't know what your situation is, but it will get better. It just feels like if anything, this is one thing that you're going to get from whatever the situation is. You're going to see who's truly there versus who's not. And this is a situation that really brings people together. And it shows you who, who is truly your people versus who isn't. Okay. So Sagittarius, ninth house is what I got for you. That is your read. Next up, Capricorn and 10th house. What do we have going on for Capricorn and 10th house? Your current energy. The king of pentacles. Um... Some of you, it just feels like you, you're kind of, some of you, it feels like you're kind of like in between worlds right there. Now, where it's almost like you're walking into a new chapter. Some of you, you could be walking into a new chapter in life, one that, uh, it's more abundant. There's a sense of, you see all the greenery. Some of you could literally be moving. Um, but it just feels like, uh, you're, some of you could feel like you're kind of in between worlds right now. It's like neither here nor there. Some of you are just like kind of in the sense of internalized in between where it's like you don't really align with, past versions of yourself you're not quite sure who the future version of yourself and you're just like kind of on the path to becoming who you were always meant to be oh shit some of you are literally in the middle of walking the path to becoming who you were always meant to be walking your true path some of you there was always a path that you were meant to walk and you're literally in the steps of heading that way right now it is but it's like walking between it's like kind of living in the in between in between i'm literally hearing the song in between <clears throat> But it's like you're kind of on the in-between, between different versions of yourself that are no more. Stepping into a whole new version that aligns with the path that you were always meant to be on. I don't know. I've, I, don't ever, I don't think I've ever gotten that before. Um, anything good. Something. There's something good coming in. Something where you least expect it. There's something coming in from someone. You might not quite trust it, though. You might not trust it's almost like uh, something seems too good to be true. It's like, I don't trust it. I don't trust it. There's something. See, true. There is something coming your way or it could be someone. There's something kind of slick and low key about it where you're not going to trust it, but it's good. So some music could be a person. Maybe you feel like this person's a little slick and you're not sure if you can trust them. You're not sure what else is going on under, under the hood. But this is the good shit. So for this to be in the good shit, it is good though. This is where you have to learn to differentiate. Is it your head or is it, you know, like your gut, your heart, your, what is giving you that feeling? Is it your mind that is basically, you know, trying to tell you, oh, no, 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 no. Something, something must be, or is it your gut? People tend to overanalyze and then they get stuck in their head and they can fuck up shit for themselves because they get so lost in their thoughts. Meanwhile, the thoughts are trying to steer you in the wrong direction. Um, that's why you got to learn how to differentiate between your intuition versus your mind. But there's something coming in from an unexpected place and it's something good. But I feel like you're not meant to know what exactly it is. It just knows that there's something kind of in the works for you and it's kind of low key, but you might not trust it when it comes in. Some music could be a person who you don't trust. Someone could be doing something kind of on the sly, but it's something good. And it's almost like this could even be someone trying to do something nice for you, right? And it's almost like you don't trust it. It's almost like, say if someone's trying to do something for you, and it's almost like, you're like, why would you want to do that for me? You're not going to trust it. I don't know. For some of you, why can this feel like something with a house? I don't know. Because I'm seeing, I'm seeing like a house. 
I don't know, maybe someone shows up at your house or something. There's something that it's like, it's like some, there's some opportunity, some door of opportunity opening up, but you're not going to trust it. I don't know if it's because you don't trust the source of where it's coming from, or it just seems like it's too good to be true, or maybe it's both. But it's almost like, why, why, why would you want to do that for me? You barely know me. That's what I'm hearing. It's like, you barely know me. Why would you want to do something like that for me? Someone could want to do something for you. And it's like, why though? And I'm hearing you barely know me. So this could be, you know, maybe an opportunity opens up for you in regards to something and it's someone who you barely know and they're wanting to do something for you. Or maybe it's like you meet the right person at the uh, right person, right place, right time. And they are like the key to some form of opportunity. It's almost like, why would you want to, why would you want to offer that to me? You know, I don't know. It's different for everyone, but it just, that's what it feels like. It's like, why would you want to do that for me? You barely know me. So I don't know. Um, there's some form of opportunity or doorway or pathway being opened up for you but you're not going to trust it but it is good this is literally in the good shit so there is good intention and this is good this feels like take it whatever this is whatever opportunity this is whatever doorway is opening for you take it bitch you're not going to trust it for some use it could be because you don't trust the source but it feels like take it because it's a good thing don't let your mind overthink and talk you out of something that this is something that's good this is literally in the good shit so this Seven of Swords is a good Seven of Swords. You might not trust it. You might question a uh, motive um, or you might not trust the source or you just question motive because it's like, why would you want to do that for me? Especially if you feel like this person barely knows you. <clears throat> now what to avoid? For some of you, this is like a helping hand in some in some form because what I got with this is with the Nine of Pentacles, what to avoid? Don't be too good to accept help. This is like, no, I got I got it. I got it on my own. Look, all the women who are independent, throw your hands up at me. Maybe you're one of those bitches. I could do it on my own. I don't need your help, you know? Especially for those of you who are in some form of in-between. In-between, right? Maybe some of you are literally in-between jobs. Some of you could be in-between homes. I don't know. Hopefully not. But, you know, shit happens. But it just feels like don't be too good to accept the helping hand because it feels like you have a helping hand coming in that wants to help you. And it feels like accept the help, bitch. Accept the help. Don't feel like you have to do everything on your own. Nine of Pentacles. The nines are the single solitary individual numbers. But this is like someone coming in. Emperor out of nowhere. Tower. This is like someone coming in to help you in a time of need with some shit. So I don't know. Maybe there's some situation you got going on and someone wants to help you out and it feels like accept the help. Don't just be, don't, don't just be so swift to say, no, I got it on my own. I don't need you. I don't need a man to make it happen. I get off the end fray. Don't be one of those bitches like, I got it myself. I don't need your help. Look, no one said you need it, but that doesn't mean you can't take the help if it's offered to you. Surprise! Everything's going to work out. Everything's going to work out smoothly. L look, look, go with the flow. Everything's going to turn out good. Everything's going to turn out fucking Gucci, bitch. Whatever the fuck this is. This just feels like things are going... Ugh, everything is working out in the way that it's supposed to. How it's supposed to, when it's supposed to. There's a sense of divine protection, divine timing all over this. And I don't always get that shit. But with this tempers, I'm feeling like everything is happening as it's supposed to, when it's supposed to. Even this shit which you're not going to trust, but don't push it away. Even if you're not going to trust it, don't push it away because this isn't the good shit. So it's good. Everything is happening as it's supposed to when it's supposed to. Listen to your guides. Listen to your intuition. Go with the flow. Don't go, don't try to swim against the stream. Go with the flow. Okay. Because it feels like things are going to move in a really good direction. It's like, you know what I'm getting with that temperance card? It's almost like a beautiful transition. That's what I'm getting with the temperance. It's almost like a form of transition. Oh, 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 and that works well too because look, we have the moon cycles. There's a sense of transitioning. Which goes with what I said to the begin with with the with the King of Pentacles. You're in a you're in a stage of transition in your life. Everything is moving along the way it's supposed to, as it's supposed to, when it's supposed to. So don't go against the grain, just, you know, kind of go along with it. Just go with the flow. Everything is as it's supposed to be because you're transitioning. This literally feels like someone who is transitioning. I'm not saying you're actually transitioning. You know, some of these could be, in which case, congratulations. Um, but this just feels like you're in some form of transition within your life itself. 
But again, some of you could actually be in the process of going through transitioning, in which case, again, congratulations. Um, but yeah, it just feels like uh, everything is going as it's supposed to. And everything, it was so weird. I almost thought that was a seven right there. But it's the sun. This is like the sun and the moon. I'm hearing Mrs. Doubtfire. Help us on the way, dear. This feels like it's going to be a smooth transition, regardless of whatever it is. Um, you could find yourself going through a surprisingly smooth transition. So whatever in between you're in, it just feels like you're transitioning into a new direction. And things are going to go a lot smoother than you could have possibly anticipated. All right, my loves. With that said, Capricorn 10th house is what I got for you. That is your read. Next up, Aquarius on 11th house. What do I have going on for my Aqua Babies in 11th house, please? Mm. So, there's gonna be something in regards to not talking to someone. Um, that's a side note. Your current energy, um, use of emotions. Some of you could be trying to avoid your emotions, trying to avoid your feelings. Not gonna lie, some of you could be literally knocking a few back just to uh, take the edge off. Um, or if you're not knocking anything back, there's a sense of, there could be sense of vices. I'm also seeing like vapes. So if you're someone who is like you vape or smoke, you could be, you know, vaping and smoking extra heavy as a form of vo a vice. Um, there's a sense of form of means of trying to avoid one's own emotions, trying to basically kind of tap out, you know, kind of tune out, you know. Um, but some of you could literally be hitting the bottle, though, especially this is the King of Cups. And he's got the thing to his, you know, it's like running away from your feelings, not wanting to feel, avoidant behavior. Um, yeah, good shit. Uh, for those of you, some of you could literally be just avoiding people altogether. Some of you, you're going to find yourself coming out of that. Um, some of you could have been going through about a depression. There's a sense of coming out of that. Um, for others of you, if there has been a sense of feeling isolated and closed off in regards to someone who you're not talking to, there could be some light shed at the end of the tunnel in a form of break in, uh, whatever this time of isolation has been, you know, some of you could literally be like trying to avoid your feelings because you're feeling disconnected from someone, in which case there could be some form of light shed or communication or something. Uh, it feels like some form of positive turnaround in regards to something from I, someone you've been isolated from. Now, again, for others of you where it's not that deep, where there's no one, it's just a sense of for those of you who've been more closed off and isolating yourselves, you're going to find yourself coming out of that and getting out more. So you're going to find yourself wanting to get out of the house more, getting out there doing things. Um, what to avoid. Don't put your life on hold. Don't put for those of you who are like kind of hung up on someone, don't put your life on hold for anyone or anything. Now, for others of you, what to avoid with that world card there. <clears throat> don't be afraid to close the book and start anew. Don't be afraid to <sighs> end things, let go. If there's things that just aren't doing it for you, things that are making you feel less than. This could even be where it's like you could be surrounded by all the people in the world and still feel the loneliest you've ever felt, right? Right? Don't be afraid to put an end to an old story, to put an end to an old chapter, to put an end to an old cycle. Um, and just walk away. Now, surprise, I feel like some of you are going to find, look, I can't, I can't help it. Some of you, there's some form of rock bottom, this feels like. This feels like, again, especially if any of you have gone through, gone through about a depression, it feels like whatever form of rock bottom you feel that you've hit, there's a sense of you're going to come out from it. Some of you, perhaps you could even experience a form of dark night of the soul, but it feels like there is coming out of whatever this is. If you felt like you were shut out and isolated from someone, there's a sense of the light being turned back on and no longer being left out in the cold. Um, for others of you, this is just going through a form of rock bottom, but at the same time, you're going to come out of it. Sometimes you have to hit rock bottom, so that way the only place there is left is up. So for those of you who are going through a form of rock bottom, 
It can be suggested, you know, what to avoid. Don't repeat the cycle. Like old ways don't unlock new doors. And it's like, if something's not working for you, even if it's a way of life, it's seeing that where it's like this, I can't keep living like this. Leaving it behind. Don't, don't be afraid to say, you know what? I don't want to live my life like this. I want something more for myself. Some of you, there's a sense of leaving behind an old way, an old way of being, an old way of thinking, an old way of doing. And finally, the light breaking through, especially for those of you who are going through any form of, uh, whether it's dark night of the soul or just at your own form of rock bottom. Remember, breaks aren't bad. It's how the light gets in. And it feels like you're going to have your breaking point where the light is finally going to get in and you're going to be coming out of this. Now, for others of you, it's not that deep. It's just that uh, if you've been really shut, if you've felt more so isolated, some of you could have literally taken it upon yourself to kind of isolate yourself from everyone and everything. And it just feels like you're going to find yourself in this energy finally coming out of that and um, finally stepping into the light. <clears throat> in which case, if you're someone who just completely isolated yourself from everyone and everything, what not to do? Don't be a hermit. Don't keep yourself closed off from the world. Don't be afraid to go out into the world and be seen. Get out there. Get out the house. Go travel, you know? Go see some shit. Make a new friend or two, you know? Make some friends. Get to know some people, you know? It helps to have someone to talk to. All right, my loves. With that said, Aquarius, 11th house. That's what I got for you. That's your read. Last and most certainly not least, Pisces and 12th house. And a very, very special happy birthday to my Pisces baby. Today is his birthday. Today is your birthday, baby. Happy birthday. Love you. Um, but yeah, what that says. What do we got for Pisces and 12th house? Oh, for some of you, someone could be wanting to apologize for something. This is like someone who put their foot in their mouth or some shit, or someone could feel like they fucked up the connection with you. Um, could be friend, family, lover, whatever. <clears throat> Your energy, you're just like kind of really feeling good. You, some of you could be feeling very generous. Um, some of you just be feeling like, you know what? Life is good. I got everything I want. I, I need for not, want for not, and just like kind of sharing the wealth, right? Some of you just feeling really good. Um, feeling fulfilled. Some of you, it is your birthday season. You could be opening up presents. And we're like, hey, you know? Some of you be getting, you know, gifts and like, hey, birthday parties and shit. I don't fucking know. Now, good shit. Anything legal will go in your favor, bitch. If you're dealing with any form of legalities, things will go in your favor. Now, for others of you who are not dealing with anything legal, this is just an energy of, you got good karma, bitch. You got good karma coming. You got karma on your side. You got good shit coming your way because you're, this is where you're getting a cash in. You're getting a cash in good karma brownie points. Now, what to avoid? Don't be selfish. Don't be stingy. And don't sweat. Don't worry about money. It feels like, you see her face there? She's like kind of not even worried. Don't worry about money. It's the pentacles. It's the sense of money. Don't worry about money because it feels like money's going to be fine. Money's going to be good. Oh, shit. What's that? Don't worry. If any of you have been like kind of worried about money, don't sweat it. Because look, 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 look. I've never seen that before. You see the hand? You could have some form of unexpected money or bonus or payout or raise coming in out of somewhere. Maybe some of you use, uh, maybe some of you end up getting more money in your taxes than you thought, you know, than you originally thought. It just feels like unexpected money. So if you're stressing over money or anything like that, don't, because it feels like there's some form of unexpected money coming your way. So don't even stress it. Don't even, don't even sweat it. Um, surprise. Everything is moving along as it's supposed to, how it's supposed to, when it's supposed to. It's like everything is right on time. There's a sense of uh, transitioning type energy. Everything is like kind of, everything is going how it's supposed to, when it's supposed to, as it's supposed to. It just feels like you're going to find yourself just feeling like everything is just like kind of 
you can be a winner. You're going to feel like you're winning at life. Like everything is just like kind of falling into place and just like kind of, it's almost like, uh, you ever see ballet or anything like that? Or, you know, uh, if you've ever been a dancer, right? Like, uh, yeah, could you believe I used to be a fucking dancer in another life? I even choreographed, but it's like, um, there's this sense of rhythm that goes along with all the movements, all the moving parts and all the components, right? And it just feels like everything, everything is, you're going to feel like everything is just like kind of moving along beautifully, gracefully. It's, it's all coming together. And there's a sense of flow. You're going to feel like this beautiful sense of flow. Like everything is like kind of just going along in the right direction. And everything, it's like a sense of harmony. It is. It's like a sense of harmonious type energy. So I don't know. It just feels like things are getting really good. Um, you got good karma coming your way. Some of you could have a, I don't know why I want to say it. Some of you could have an actual Libra coming your way. <laughs> um, some of you could have a Libra with an offer. Um, oh, oh, there could be a Libra coming towards you with an offer. Um, don't overthink it is what, is what I, is what I feel called to say. Don't overthink it. Um, hmm. Okay. Um, that's weird. But, um, there's a sense of divine timing all over this. And the Six of Pentacles, that's a sense of reciprocity, equal, reciprocal. Temperance is that fair balance as well. Justice is all about balance. This is that karmic balance, the karmic scales. It just feels like there's a form, and the Ace of Pentacles is new. There's a form of karmic reboot for you, karmic reset. And it just feels like things are, you're getting the good end of things. Like, you know how people say, oh, I had the shit end of the stick on that one. Well, you're not getting the shit end of the stick. You're getting the good end of the stick, you know? So... I don't know. It just feels like you got good karma coming your way and things are going to take a turn for the better is what I want to say. All right, my loves, that is what I got for you. That is your read. All right, my loves. Well, if you made it this far, thank you all so very much. I absolutely love and adore every single last one of you. With that said, I hope you all have a fantastical rest of your day, rest of your night, whatever time it is where you are. I love you all. Be well, be safe, and I will catch you all on the next one. Bye.